Ooh. It is currently 7.30 on a Tuesday morning. I'm here at the office opening up as we are getting our sinks unblocked. Sinks. Uh, it is a little bit chillier since it is autumn now, since I last made my other videos. And we are moving into winter, which means snow season is coming, which you can't wait for. Other news, uh, crypto has gone up, stocks have gone up. S&P went over $4,000, which is cool. And I'm also um, excited because I bought a new tripod, finally. I don't think I've owned a tripod in maybe like four, three years. So this one's pretty cool. All right, am I in the frame? Yep. So this is the new tripod. It is a Sarui one. This is the 2214X and the K32 ball head. This is actually a photography ball head. So I am still in the market for a video head, which maybe you guys can help me out, uh, maybe in the comments below. I'm thinking of maybe the new Manfrotto 504X uh, head with the half bolt or I am thinking if they were to release a new MVH 500 head that might be a little bit better as I'm not wanting such a large ball head anymore or a video head anyways let's crack it open Swing. Yeah. it's got a neat bag and the main reason I wanted to get a tripod like this is that it easily converts to a video head or a video tripod or a photography tripod. I've actually been uh, testing out my friend's one of these for the past few weeks. And yeah, I liked it so much that I thought it's just the option I would get. It comes with a center column. You got the sticks right here and it comes with the half bowl adapter, which I was talking about which will adapt my cool head to in the future. Sweet. Cool, so this thing sits in the middle of the tripod and then you're able to put a video head with the half bowl and the screwy thing at the bottom. I'll leave that in there for now so I don't lose it. You got a center column, which is handy, but the most exciting part is this thing here. Great. Yeah, super lightweight since it's carbon fiber and it's pretty cool. It has a hook at the bottom just with the standard um, mount here. And so I can like hook my bag onto the clips just turn it's not like clips it's just like the twist locks which aren't too bad actually uh the reason i also like these is because it's a little bit um more inexpensive to fix these if they break uh you can just get the spare parts since i used to work at a camera shop we did it all the time you just unscrew the whole thing add these new plastic bits and then you can stick it in um so i definitely feel more confident if this were to break i should be able to fix it unless say the carbon fiber snaps or something. But that is cool. Taking a look at the tripod as, uh, at the tripod head as well. If I'm not an idiot, boom. This also comes in a neat bag, which I'll probably use for something else. I mean, it is what it is. It's a ball head. It has the uh, unlock and you can lock it in. It has uh, like your drag down here. It has the quick release knob. One thing I do like about it is that it does have the levels, both uh, vertical and horizontal. So that's pretty neat. It has a button to make sure it doesn't just slide off. And then this should just easily screw directly onto her. Boom. And all this metal is pretty cold. So I'm glad it has these like hand grip things ta-da and then you could also just use 
a little uh, Allen key to unscrew this, and then you can take out this center column and then add either the full center column or the half ball mount. Oh, it's freezing. Let's go inside. One secret thing that not many people know about the Saruri tripods is that if you unscrew the little hook underneath, say, a center column or this base, you're actually going to find a little Allen key underneath. So you can use that to tighten up your Krikalis plate or unscrew any of the things around the tripod. And then you can just screw it back underneath. Boom. So now, since it is still a little bit early in the morning, I'm going to check out my cryptocurrencies. Currently, I'm up to $3,200 in my wallet, which is still quite small. Um, the main cryptocurrencies I hold is Bitcoin, Tron, uh, BitTorrent, Cardano, Stellar. I bought a little bit of Superfarm when it came out. I actually really like the concept. Um, it's not doing too well, but other than that, it's okay. Like for instance, I held Stella for a few months now and it was a pretty impulse buy. I, I just transferred some money from Coinbase to CoinSpot and I enjoyed like how minimal the fees were on Stella and I guess their, their ethos. Um, but yeah, I bought into Stella and then it just started diving and then it kept going down and it was holding at this like really low spot. And I was like, oh man, am I ever, should I just sell it? Um, but I think the mentality I have with cryptocurrencies and I think like many other people, they're just going to hold them for quite a while. So I think that's what I'm going to do as well. So I bought in like maybe $200. Now it's going up to 266, not the best returns, but still pretty good. Um, I think the best return recently has been either BitTorrent or Tron. Uh, I think I put in like $200 and then it doubled, um, and, and did like double and a bit, which was really good. So yeah, I'm still holding those positions and possibly looking into getting some Ethereum uh, as Ethereum 2.0 should be out soon, hopefully, and maybe a little bit of Bitcoin. Bitcoin has gone up to almost $80,000 now. Um, it fluctuates between 79 and 80 at the moment. So that's pretty cool. And Ethereum is probably gonna go over three grand um, pretty soon. Um, Ripple's done really well recently. I don't have any Ripple. Um, and Cardano has recently gone up as well. I think the next thing I'm looking to do is jump into staking and um, yeah, some sort of kind of stuff like that, but still doing a bit of more research. So if you know any crypto books or anything like that, definitely co comment them down below. I'm actually more interested in reading more about crypto. So it's pretty cool. Uh, in terms of stocks, actually, um, my Apple stocks finally hit the threshold that they're like doing okay. So I've bought about 5.8 um, shares in Apple, which equates to about $769. Uh, we, did, we got a bit of a loss yesterday, but a few days ago it went up quite a bit. Um, but I'm just going to hold those. They should be paying out a dividend pretty soon. And yeah, I'll just leave those and see how they go. Other than that, it's going pretty well. I'm going to, yeah, check on a time-lapse and do a bit of reading, do a bit of journaling. Yeah, let's do it. Still hot. Um, journaling went well, reading went well. My camera actually died, so I'm swapping over to this sack of potatoes, which is my iPhone 8. Um, yeah, it's not as good, but it'll do for the outro and for a quick little story about this pen. Now, I've opened this pen on camera before. This is the Fisher Space Pen. For those who don't know, it um, writes upside down and the ink always comes out, um, so that way people can write in space. Now, there is a myth around this pen that um, America or NASA uh, was in need to, of a pencil or a uh, pen to write in space. So they uh, developed um, this pen and it cost them millions and millions of dollars. Um, but instead, Russia just used pencils in space. Um, 
Apparently that's not true, but the model of the story is that sometimes we're focused so much on developing one thing that we overlook um, some simple solutions, I would say. Um, but apparently that's not true, and um, Mr. Fisher actually um, designed it and created it himself. He invested about a million dollars in um, creating a cartridge that uses nitrogen to push down the ink, so that way it always will come out, no matter if you have zero gravity. Um, NASA then took it on, um, did a whole bunch of tests and research behind it, and then they found that it would work pretty well, so they decided to use it because pencils did also have the issue of if their lead broke off and it's just started floating in space, it could ruin their instruments. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I do like this space pen. It writes pretty well, but I wish it had a slightly finer tip. Um, but other than that, it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna leave a link to this pen down below, as well as um, to the tripod and to the books and even to the brokerage platforms I use for crypto and stocks. So if you have any questions, definitely pop them down in the comments below. That's gonna do it for this video. Uh, please don't use any of the uh, things I said as financial advice. I don't know why people say that, but a lot of people say it and I'm assuming it's so that you don't get in trouble, I don't get in trouble. It's, uh, it's good all around. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.